I'm Jason Harper with Miles Mediation and Arbitration. I'm here today with my colleagues Susan Forsling and Joe Murphy. We want to talk to you about alternative court services that are offered here at Miles Mediation and Arbitration. We have several factors going into that. One is the great unknown. The Chief Justice's newest emergency order issued by Chief Justice Melton this week basically uh, has allowed courts to begin reopening with certain criteria in place. What has resulted is certain courts are gonna resume in-person operations as early as this month, whereas others will wait until June or July. Thus, some will maintain virtual uh, court settings and others will be in person. Litigants will not all be able to go into the courthouse together. So for all those courts that are resuming operations in person, you'll be given most likely times to enter or there will be a capacity limit, which could result in a significant backlog. Likewise, Criminal cases are more likely to take precedent than civil cases because there's an enormous backlog of things such as arraignments uh, that are pending before the courts. What we do know is it is unlikely for jury trials to resume in the state of Georgia or possibly anywhere until early 2021. The reason for that is simple. Jurors cannot be placed in a jury assembly room with 150 plus people uh, with the COVID virus still uh, in existence. The other reason is jurors are not likely to come if you did summon them prior to a vaccine being put in place. Additionally, the Chief Justice noted recently that it would be difficult uh, for jurors to forego pay in their own jobs when they've been unemployed for a month or two and then to come and accept jury service for the pay that we currently provide. So I'm here today to talk to you about what Miles can do. And joining me is Susan and Joe. Joe, I want you to talk about uh, what the need is for resolution in this unknown time. How can people get their case resolved? Thank you, Jason. The, the two primary pillars of Justice Chief Justice Melton's order are number one, we are not going to have the normal function of courts in terms of jury trials for quite some time to come. While we're still kicking the can on that, that's clearly off the table right now. The other aspect though is that they, the Supreme Court wants the state and superior courts to remain busy and to do all business that they can do uh, as efficiently as they can do it. As you've indicated, that will be interpreted variously depending on uh, the different court circuits out there. Some will try to do virtual replacements for in-person hearings, uh, whether it's discovery or motions or, or that sort of thing, or non-jury trials. Others will try to do it in person, but with social distancing practices, whether that means you get an appointment to see a judge for a particular hearing. Um, you can just imagine all the inefficiencies that will creep into that model. If I have a one o'clock appointment for a one hour motion that lasts for two hours, now people are standing out on the street at the square in Marietta waiting for their case to be heard so they can be admitted into the courtroom. So you have this juxtaposition of two things that don't really go well together. And the one is, Courts are going to stay busy. However efficiently, they're going to churn and burn and keep the wheels of, of activity moving. But they're all moving in a direction where there is no end game. There is no finality in the terms of a, of a jury trial, uh, particularly for civil cases, which are not only in a long line that isn't moving, they're behind the criminal cases. We know why. You have a right to a trial by civil jury, but you don't have a speedy right to that trial. That's the criminal cases. So on the one hand, courts will be moving. On the other hand, they have nowhere to go, ultimately. So the thing that we have always offered in ADR, and particularly with mediation and arbitration, is finality, is a conclusion. Every case that was started has to stop. And the end point is always the reason for the beginning and the middle of litigation. So what we're saying, to, what we've learned, I guess what's new in this most recent order from Chief Justice Melton is not that the courts won't be uh, having jury trials for a long time. We knew that. What's new is that the courts will be staying busy. So anybody who has been on the sidelines or kicking the can on ADR thinking, well, at least everything is going to stay the way it is, that's not happening. Your, every aspect of your case that costs money, that costs time, that costs resources, um, will continue to plow forward. The only thing you won't be able to get from all that plowing is harvesting. It's from getting the conclusion that you need. So what we do offer, and I've always offered, and now really we're the only road to that, to that particular destination, is the finality. Uh, we've got not only mediation, we've got arbitration, we've got other alternative services that we can offer. We've got lots of uh, excellent judges on our panel, and one of them is about to speak now. I think Susan can share with us 
some thoughts about different things we can offer in this uh, in this new and uncertain time that we face that can help get you where you need to be. Well, the, Chief Justice's order, the Chief Justice's order included some directives to trial court judges as well. Talk to us about that as well and what that, how that affects the finality that Joe's talking about. Well, thanks, uh, Jason and, and Joe. Um, one of the provisions of the Chief Justice's order, which is generating the most discussion among trial court judges, is a provision that says, with respect to standing orders, case management orders, that a judge is not able to simply kick the can and say, all right, they're all extended by 30, 60, 90 days. Specifically, Justice Melton has mentioned in his remarks in the town hall meetings, and the order specifically provides that a judge must modify even standing orders for each case on a case-by-case -case basis. And it makes some sense because 30 or 60 days might be all right for some folks, but for other folks who have clients who are medically at risk or other things going on, that would necessarily uh, meet their needs. So the first thing it presents is, and I'm thinking <laughs> as a trial judge, if I had to redo all of my scheduling orders on an individual basis, um, it's gonna take some time and there's gonna be a period of uncertainty there. So you finally get these orders in place after it's gotta be some kind of a, a delay. And what are the purpose of these orders? Well, the purpose of these orders are exactly what Joe was talking about. We're gonna get busy and we're gonna get this case ready to be tried, but yet we don't have a means to actually get them to jury. But the other thing that we know about these orders, um, there are pivotal times in the life of every case and in every case management order where defining decisions are made. And those decisions can affect everything from the shifting of a risk or to the outcome. Think about times for dispositive motions. Think about things like a Daubert motion, which may lead to the exclusion of an expert and therefore a summary judgment motion that might not have been viable. So the problem would be that if you've gotten busy and you're doing what your order says to do, but you really need a decision on one of these dispositive motions or motions that uh, one way or the other will direct the outcome of the case or certainly where the risk is in terms of either party's ability to prevail. And the question is, given the fact that the courts are gonna be now rewriting all their scheduling orders, they're getting busy doing as much as they can virtually, they're going to have to gear up for criminal ahead how long are you going to have to wait to get a decision on a pivotal issue, a pivotal juncture that ultimately will determine the direction of your case? And so it seems to me that because of the way this is written with this new order, there's great opportunities to use arbitration particularly to decide things like Dalbert motions, dispositive summary judgment type motions. And the reason that's important in my mind is it not only is going to um, affect outcome, but it also affects risk. And you're gonna have a better ability to evaluate your case while you're waiting in line. I've analogized it to a Hartsfield flight pattern. You just kinda of gotta wait till it's your turn to land for your jury trial. Well, you will at least have an opportunity at that point to say, do I really wanna wait? Now that I know that we've had these key dispositive motions or these key issues resolved, it seems to me we've got a much clearer path to get this thing resolved between ourselves. So I think at this point, Miles Mediation is certainly poised to fill in the gap, fill a void, and be able to give parties some certainty on things that affect both outcome and risk. Susan, just to be clear, most folks, you know, including myself, prior to this crisis, I viewed arbitration as 
finality in some sense. You, you submit your case. And some, sometimes when we presided as judge, we had to enforce an arbitration agreement that right. moved it from our consideration. Arbitration through Georgia's arbitration code, we can do anything from discovery disputes, motions in limine, Daubert motions, summary judgment motions, anything that the parties consent to. That's to right. A consent order to the presiding judge to transfer to arbitration. We could do it all here at mediation short of the jury trial. Is, is that your understanding? Yes, it is, as long as the parties agree. And so an added advantage, if you will, and again, coming from the, the heart and mind of a state court judge, we can take care of a lot of the stuff that the judges uh, may not be too excited about addressing. We all know that judges don't just are not enamored necessarily with discovery disputes, for an example, particularly the complicated ones in dealing with IT or other issues. Um, I'm sure there'd be a lot of judges who'd be very grateful if an arbitrator would decide a, a Daubert motion or a summary judgment motion that the parties have stipulated to be bound by that decision. What does that mean? Well, then the judge can focus the court's time on getting cases as far advanced as many cases as possible. And the judge will also know by doing this, we've got a better likelihood of getting resolution by agreement through the party. So I, I think it's a great opportunity. Parties have to agree to it. Joe, talking about the great unknown, do you feel like if we heard some of these motions and cleaned up the case and had them ready for trial that folks could better evaluate their risk as Susan mentioned? Absolutely. Uh, for one way, I think Daubert stuff is really important. That's a good example because if an expert's not going to be permitted to give an opinion, that obviously may change the position that a party has on the case versus if they are, uh, it, it could go a completely different direction. There's so many forks in the road, as uh, Judge Forsling has said, where if you just knew which direction you were going, which path you were taking, then it becomes easier to do something like mediate. Very often in mediation, uh, we're too early in the process. It's not even a chronological question. It's just we're, we're, we're before a fork in the road, which because we don't know it, it could lead to everything or nothing. And being able to sort some of these pathways out and get people through uh, those uncertainties puts them either in a position to resolve the case through settlement or mediation or maybe it sets it up for something like an arbitration or when the courts eventually open for jury trials, at least things are sorted out and, um, and you're ready to go. Right. All and right. that's a good, that's a good point, Joe. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to have your case in a position where the courts likely jury trials are back up and it's your turn to land. If we use my flight pattern, but you're like, Oh wait, judge, um, I'm going to need to circle a few more times because you may not remember this, but we've got a Daubert motion, we've got this, we've got this, to, we have these motions on evidence, we have this, this. You wouldn't want to miss an opportunity to Joe's point because you haven't taken advantage of getting these issues resolved ahead of time. Well, Joe and Susan, thank you for sharing your thoughts and your expertise on that and your willingness to join us in helping resolve cases uh, through the great time of the unknown. Uh, for those of you who wish to learn more about alternative court services at Miles Mediation, please visit the link uh, to the website and contact us for more information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.